Welcome to Lecture 9. In today's lecture, we will define the chemical potential in order to analyze the thermodynamics of multi-component systems to describe what happens in mixtures. This lecture will be divided into three parts. First, we will define what is the chemical potential. Then, we will use it to discuss ideal solutions. Finally, since we live in the real world, we will examine how real solutions are described. In the previous lecture, we used the molar Gibbs free energy to define if a process that described a single component system was spontaneous, where the molar Gibbs free energy is simply the Gibbs free energy of the system divided by the number of moles of the substance. If there are multiple species in the system, as illustrated by the different colored dots in the figure on the right, then the contribution to the Gibbs free energy from each component is given by something called the chemical potential. The chemical potential for a component is defined as the partial derivative of the Gibbs free energy with respect to the number of moles of that component while holding the temperature, pressure, and the number of moles of the other components constant. Then, by multiplying the number of moles by the component's chemical potential and summing over all components, we would get the total Gibbs free energy of the system. We previously determined that the molar Gibbs free energy for a pure gas at constant temperature varies with pressure according to the molar Gibbs free energy at some final pressure being equal to the molar Gibbs free energy at an initial pressure plus RT times the natural logarithm of the final pressure over the initial pressure. For our purposes in this lecture, we will set the final pressure, PF, to simply P, being the pressure of interest, and PI to the standard pressure, which is one bar. This makes the molar Gibbs free energy at the initial pressure equal to the standard molar Gibbs free energy. Taking all this into account gives the molar Gibbs free energy at some pressure is equal to the standard molar Gibbs free energy plus RT times the natural logarithm of P over the standard pressure. For a mixture of gases, we use the chemical potential to describe gas J's contribution to the total Gibbs free energy. This expression is analogous to the one we just reviewed, but instead of using the molar Gibbs free energy terms, we use chemical potential terms instead. Therefore, the chemical potential of component J is equal to the standard chemical potential of component J plus RT times the natural logarithm of the partial pressure of J divided by the standard pressure. So, the more of gas J that's in the system, the larger its chemical potential and the more potential for that component to contribute chemically. The figure on the right illustrates this fact, that as the partial pressure of the gas increases, so does the chemical potential. It also demonstrates how temperature plays a role in the chemical potential. Let's use this expression for the chemical potential now to describe basically how the chemical potential of a substance changes under varying conditions. So here we have this example where we have the partial pressure of an ideal gas and that's going from 100 kilopascals to 50 kilopascals as it's consumed in a reaction at 25 degrees Celsius. And the question is, find the change in chemical potential due to this drop in pressure. And so like anything, if we're going to find a change in something, then what that is is just the final minus the initial of that thing. So we just have to calculate what is the final chemical potential, what is the initial chemical potential, and then subtract these two terms. So first let's find what the initial chemical potential is. And in this case, we're just going to need to write out first the expression for chemical potential. So the standard chemical potential plus RT times the natural logarithm of, and in this case, it's going to be the initial pressure over the standard pressure. And if we substitute in the numbers that we know, I'm going to leave RT written just as RT for now. But this natural logarithm, well, the initial pressure is 100 kilopascals. And the standard pressure is one bar, which is also 100 kilopascals. And so in this case, this, this natural logarithm term, well, I have the natural logarithm of 100 over 100, which is the natural logarithm of 1. And the natural logarithm of 1 is 0. So that means that whole term disappears. And so what that leaves me with is that the initial chemical potential in this case is just equal to the standard chemical potential. Let's now look at the final case. In the final case, again, we're going to start with the same starting point, the standard chemical potential plus RT times the natural logarithm of the final pressure over the standard chemical potential, or sorry, the standard pressure. In this case, I'm going to leave these numbers unsubstituted quickly for the time being, so I have mu or the chemical or the standard chemical potential plus RT, 
In this case, I have the natural logarithm of 50 divided by 100. Again, remembering that the standard pressure is 1 bar or 100 kilopascals. So what I have now, if I s simplify that expression, I have the standard chemical potential of this component plus RT times the natural logarithm of 1 half. Let's now do this subtraction that I alluded to at the beginning. Because again, we're just trying to find the change in chemical potential. That's equal to the final minus the initial. So if we substitute in those terms, I have the standard chemical potential of this gas plus RT times the natural logarithm of 1 half. And from that, I'm going to subtract off the standard chemical potential for this gas. And so because I have something plus minus the same term, I can cancel it out. And so what I'm left with is RT times the natural logarithm of 1 half. And so if I start now to substitute in numbers, 8.3145 times the temperature, which is 25 plus 273.15 times the natural logarithm of 1 half. Well, the final answer to this then, or the change in chemical potential due to the consumption of this gas, is negative 1.72 times 10 to the 3 joules per mole. Now, to be clear, this number that we just calculated, this doesn't tell me if the process itself is spontaneous because this is only just one part or one component of a mixture of things that are together. And so, in order to figure out if the whole process was spontaneous, what we would need to do is find the chemical potentials of all the pieces in the mixture and find out if we get something that's less than zero, simply because a chemical potential is a Gibbs free energy. And if we want to find out if things are spontaneous, then we need to have a change in Gibbs free energy that's less than zero.